Behind Seti's temple, we have the Osirion, a site I was extremely excited to see in person. It's a megalithic construction comprised of granite. The age of the Osirion is a topic of great debate, and opinions include, but aren't limited to, it was built by Seti's grandson, Merenptah, it's part of the Seti One construction and built to resemble an 18th dynasty Valley of the Kings tomb. It was uncovered during the construction of the Seti complex and being considered sacred was left in place. It was built by Amenemhat III in the 12th dynasty. And of course, it was built by aliens. My opinion is that it's contemporary with the Valley Temple at Giza, which Egyptologists date to the 4th dynasty. But I think both structures are likely pre-dynastic. It was rediscovered in 1902 by Flinders Petrie and Margaret Murray. I was able to find some old photos, as well as a sketch and layout. This one is interesting as it notates the lower water level in 1914. Is this just a reservoir, or could there be lower levels? Also, the 16 small perimeter chambers are labeled as cells. So we have a possible subterranean structure, a long entrance tunnel which transitions into a vestibule with a side chamber, that tees off to a second tunnel, and further descends to a symmetrical structure. Two long chambers at either end, a center courtyard, 16 perimeter cells, and two descending staircases, which may just be for water access, but we aren't sure. Our group had special permissions to the site, and for whatever reason, the Ministry of Antiquities allowed us to use what is said to be the original entrance. We were instructed that photos inside the tunnel were strictly prohibited, but I got a few of the entrance. Then when the guardians weren't looking, I tried to take a few of the walls. Only one turned out. A fellow tour member captured a photo burst of one of the wall panels and stitched the scene together. It's rather interesting. The roof of what I'm calling the vestibule is gone, and the arched roof of the adjoining 90 degree tunnel appears to be a modern recreation. The first long chamber also lacks a roof and was full of rubble. Once inside the Osirion, we see a perimeter of water and a modern makeshift bridge. I would not be able to jump this gap. Even more intriguing, the stairs descend into the water. For comparison, here's an older picture when the water level was lower. We were closely monitored by site guardians and personnel from the Ministry of Antiquities, but check out the size of these columns. There are a total of 10 and they are massive. Most of the lintel and ceiling blocks are missing, but the few which remain are equally gigantic. We can see that the site was being quarried, and again I wonder why that stopped. But what's more interesting are these joinery pockets. This one is on a face of a column, and this one is on a top corner. Neither have a counterpart, so I'm not sure of their function. This is also one location of the Flower of Life design. Here's another large column on the opposite side with mark for scale. And this is the other location of the Flower of Life design. These appear to be carved and then filled in with red okra pigment, but I'd need a ladder to confirm. On the central axis between the two staircases are two square recesses, which at this time were full of compacted earth. I'm curious how deep these go and if they connect to anything like chambers or tunnels. One of them has an angled hole drilled into the sidewall, and I looked for the other end expecting it to be a straight shot to the water, but I had no luck. Next up are the 16 perimeter chambers, which Petrie labeled as cells. Those in the northeast corner are in bad shape due to quarrying, so I took a closer look on the western side. First we notice the vibrant algae green water, which was full of feathers, bird crap, and surprisingly, some rather large catfish. There's a ledge or walkway running around the perimeter in a pile of toppled granite blocks. The wall is predominantly running bond construction, but has some polygonal attributes and the top edges look like they were starting to be dressed. Instead of having the third course of block be the top of the doors, the granite's been notched a few inches. And it's not just the doorways, the entire ceiling and the chambers have been carved out. Additionally, the door frame surfaces are recessed and have a hinge hole in each corner, so a set of bifold doors would have either been inset a bit, or perhaps even sat flush with the wall. The chamber interiors were a bit damp and showed signs of efflorescence on the upper walls and ceilings but they also showed more intricate cutting. Just like we saw at the Valley Temple, the stones are cut to wrap around the corners instead of just placing the seams in the corner. This vertical seams even at an angle. So consider this block, carved for the door recess on the outside face, carved for the inside wraparound corner, then repeat on the other end. Here's an overhead perspective of that type of cut from the eastern wall. Did they carve them before placing, or were they roughly sized, placed, and then finish carved? If that's not impressive, turn your attention to the top right corner. It was being dressed. This entire northwest corner was being smoothed, and not just a light pass. That's substantial material removal. 
It looks like it was being worked on from the top down, and based on the other walls not being worked yet, the ceiling blocks were already in place, unless this structure was never completed. That's always an option. If this were woodworking, I'd say it was done with a power planer. Seems like a monumental feat using hand tools. The back chamber is one large open space with a cathedral ceiling, as well as a colony of bats. There were some hieroglyphs on the walls, but since there were no installed lights, I couldn't get any good photos. In the back left corner is what's labeled as a hole made by robbers on the 1914 diagram. The top hole's bricked up, but not the bottom, so that's peculiar. They go in the direction of the Seti Temple, but I'm not sure how far. Another question may be, are these outgoing or incoming tunnels? Due to the constant guardian supervision, no one was able to crawl in there for a closer look. As our time came to an end, I slowly and reluctantly started making my way up the exit stairs. This is the location of the odd corner joinery and the flower of life designs. Here's a good view of the massive column blocks, and notice how this ceiling block has its bottom corner beveled. More signs of quarrying on these blocks. And take a look at this joinery detail. I'm not sure if that's a small tenon on the column, or if both blocks are carved out and it's more of a peg. Then this hole on top of the lentil, presumably for connection to a roof block. Here we can see that these walls aren't dressed, and the large door opening is notched just like the perimeter cells. An overhead view gives you a sense of how deep underground this structure sits. This area in the back is the bedrock strata, and it shows the same erosion patterns we see on the Sphinx enclosure wall. If we go off the old sketches, I believe these smaller block walls are modern additions, maybe for retaining the sand. And this arch ceiling is a modern recreation. The wooden staircase is recent, and if I had to guess, this stone staircase is as well. More small walls on this side with what appear to be round column segments used for fill. Here's a closer look at the notching on the large door lintel, and then the few remaining ceiling blocks. It's not hard to imagine how quickly this structure could be covered and concealed in the desert sand.